this part. Um, how many? How many of you have reviewed uh, course notes for this lecture? How many? Of you? Just, just read that. Okay. Thank you. It's about half of them. It's a half. Remember what I told you in my monthly lecture. The way to catch up this class, the fact to stay ahead of the day, the, stay on the boat, is to do three things. Number one, Review the course notes before coming to a lecture. Or post that in the bars prior to each lecture. Just review it. Give you 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It will save you hours later on. The second is come to lecture. Uh, because it was snowing outside, I was wondering um, what to hear say. My you know, prediction would be true. It's, it's not sunny, so the, the room should be full. Uh, when the temperature rises, uh, some of you prefer to stay outside. Uh, third one is, is uh, review it afterwards. If you do those three things, stay with every lecture, you should be fine going through. Otherwise, you'll be dragged further, further behind. Trust me. By the time I get to one third of the class, you'll be so behind. It takes many more times ever to catch up because this is a very rapid during class. So, so this is where we start last, last, last lecture Monday. Let me pick up from here, finish it, and move from this. I'll move to the next lecture. So here, well, what I'm trying to introduce you is this concept of a psychometrical function to measure behavior. Remember, when we measure, we talk behavior here is, a, is a perception, sensory input. The stimuli being a image or sound is a physical entity, exists there in the of you as a physical point. But your perception, whether you see something or not, uh, is, is not. That's that's perceptual, that's subjective. Right? There's two things. So what do you learn so far in almost all the classes you've seen? Math, physics, chemistry, engineering, signal processing system, you name it. It's all about from a physical system to physical system. Here we begin to introduce you from physical system, physical measurement to subjective, that is your brain's interpretation. That's the different thing. This is where we introduce in this case a useful measure called a psychometrical function. And remember last uh, Monday, we uh, did a little quiz uh, test on the screen to see whether you actually seen it square or not. That's detection psychometrical function. Then at the end of that, I quickly run into another paradigm, similar, but with two squares every time. I ask you to, to tell me that same difference that called discrimination. In that case, uh, the psychometrical function is this. Okay. The first one is about the absolute threshold. The second one is about the red threshold. Or we call this detection of signal <coughs> out of background. Here is discrimination. And this choice, this experiment, this behavior is called a two alternative false choice. To With this, the probability is thing here that Now this is an uh, interest, so you can, and you can, if, you know, if you want to read more about what is two alternative false choice, you just go to Google, just, just Google it, and you read more. That's very important. Okay. So what I like you to do is to fully understand this two type of task and be able to design experiments, derive psychological functions, and I'll give you homework to exercise that. For example. As, you know, just give you an idea. The way we give you homework, give you exam is that we're going to test you. And I'm one of those lecturers who, who really just want to test people's core knowledge. So when we ask for questions, by and large, the question we we'll ask you will be core questions. You may, sometimes the professor will play tricks, right? Or we'll give you, tell you how to do things. You know, there are 50 things that are really important. I, then I assume that you're going to learn. Then I'll we'll ask you about 99 things that only few people remember. Now you, we got you in there. So this is not how we do it. We're gonna, when we tell you something important, it is really important that you really understand it. And I care more about you understanding fundamental principles <coughs> than little things here and there. Okay. This is one of the very important concepts, psychometric functions. But we're not going to ask you exactly the question, like this one in the exam or more. I'll give you another version that if you understand this, you should be able to write. For example, 
I attached the last one, the tube example, I flush grid level squares on the screen, and this is a submissive function that come up with the percentage of time you see it at various level of grid level. First of all, ask another question. That it, uh, in, in about a couple of weeks, I'll come back to, uh, to explain the audio system. This is what I do for the for study. And then you can hear sound. Right? I say, ooh, right here. Okay. And the sound has particular frequency, sound level. You can see? You can hear it. And I say, very good, right? So, so then I can ask a question. At a, with, at a particular frequency, one kilohertz, what is your threshold of detecting the sound? This is a very legitimate question. In fact, that when you are young, if your parents are thinking you've got a ear problem, yeah, because often you've got a uh, infection, right? Some of, many of you may have the experience. You get a cold, you got a, you got a water, and the parents will take you to the doctor's office, they're going to check the check you can hear or not. They said they did exactly this task, except not a point. But you can now, with this knowledge, you can derive a simple scientific experiment and derive this function. So that a major, for example, <coughs> at 1,000 hertz, my threshold is 10 dB. At 10,000 hertz, my threshold is 20 dB. Now, if you ask your parents, if I, 20 years from now, you ask me, 10,000 10, hertz, my threshold is 50 dB. Uh, well, as we get old, we will learn, then, then our hearing gets worse and worse with the right solution. All of this can be measured like this. So we'll give you an example like this so that they understand the whole concept. So this is something that it, uh, I really would like you to understand. Okay. It's going to be very useful in the future when you study the whole range of behavior uh, outside this class. So this is kind of from the knowledge we actually do. Now, and we also give an example of what is it can do uh, last week. Now, for uh, instance, you're a biomedical engineering student. So if you are a psychology student, this is where most time for freshman, sophomore, junior, they will say, that's about it, just move on. But I want to take you one step further. What is the mathematics behind this? What is the model? What is the mathematics that you can introduce to do this? In fact, this is what uh, psychologists, uh, engineers have been working on for a long time. I told you about the radar signal example. And, uh, and essentially, this is the problem. The problem is the two tasks I told you last Monday detection of square alpha background or comparisons between two squares with a slightly different degree level. They are the same, they can be framed by the same mathematics. It's like this. So this is something called detection theory. So, so what I'm drawing here is following. So when we did a task uh, among these, so I say your background is this, this is a screen, this is like a whitish screen, and the signal is white flash. Okay. But if you think about carefully, now you all know physics. If you look at this color of here, that project from the projector, that now the identical. I give you measurement, you measure it. It looks a little white grayish, but it's actually fractured because it's a hot noise. The, the noise of the, the device projects something that's slight fractured. Okay? So in a sense that they, they how white, how bright, how green this is, is a random variable. This is a constant of all we have now. So if I take a measurement of one spot here, measure it, then you should have the simplest way to describe this, it has a Gaussian function. So this background has this Gaussian function. X is a part of the simple white. <coughs> okay. Now if I project a green level square on this, you measure the same thing. What is that? Well, it's a little dark on this. So if white is this direction, dark is here. Of course, that distribution is shifted here. Is this plus this. We call this a signal plus noise. The background called noise. Okay. So when I flash that square on the screen, I say, do you see this? So what happens in your, in your eye, which you are learning in this class, your eye photoreceptor detects something on the screen, covering the action potential, go through your thalamus, go through the visual cortex. The summary of your visual cortex, you make a decision. What do I say? So while you make a decision on your brain, rather, is based on these two distributions. First, when you see this, internally, your brain generates this distribution. Now, this is the physics of fraction and light. But that fluctuation reflected in your eye, eventually if a major from your brain, your brain's response is a random two. Okay? It's not a Gaussian distribution. Suppose that about same. Okay. Then when we flash the square here in another Gaussian distribution, essentially your brain compared to say how's it different or same. Okay. So basically this is a capital D. There's two differences. 
Now, you see here is a trick now. If the two distribution, one of them is just Darpa function, another is Darpa function, that'd be easy. These are together or not together. But life is never by collect. So is this. It's always a group. So what you can see here, this two distribution has an overlap. So your brain, if you base on this x now, now we can convert this x to some sort of neural signal. Your, your brain inside somewhere in visual character. Then you have decided, well, well, where do I draw this line? If I draw a line here at beta, anything greater than this, I call this. Anything below this, I call this. That's exactly what a readback signal does. Okay. In radar, you send the send the pulse out to the sky, but the sky is not absolutely clean. The sky has a cloud and redness. So that noise is when signal come back when there's no airplane, no needs or nothing, you will have pick up some noise. That noise is perhaps this. That's how we're flying an airline here, and then and or diesel, and, and then that come back as a stronger signal with a signal. So then you have this distribution. So what a radar does, <coughs> exactly what radar does, it compares two distribution. The phi now, I call here, yeah, there's a signal. The close enough, I say, no, there's no signal. Okay. Then we'll talk about uh, what it is. So, so this is essentially the mathematics, mathematics framework before we have this. Okay. Uh, in our case, it's our brain that does this. So this x variable here now is a neural firing somewhere in the brain, which we're talking about. Okay. Yes? Given that there's some um, internal noise, presumably, yes. why do we get to assume that there's equal variance? Uh, good question. They are not. This is, we, we assume, very good question, we assume that equal variance is just for simplicity. You could form frame this by any distribution. And because it's equal uh, variance at the Gaussian, it's a simple for calculation. We take that assumption, but this is not real. But conceptually, it's part of this. Okay, good, thank you. Any other question? Okay. Um, yeah, feel free to talk to me if I got uh, some questions. All right, let's move on. See, so what a consequence. Suppose this is two distribution we operate down. And uh, uh, the room operate down. And uh, you observe this variable, for example, a neuron firing. And you decide when firing x equals the beta, I make this decision. So when there are two situations, one is just noise alone, one is noise plus signal. Right? You don't know this. The brain doesn't know this. No one told brain to stay here because you have to make a decision. Then if x greater than beta, and so what you can do is funny. So this situation with stimulus is present, this is absent. And once you set up a beta, you can make a decision. When beta x greater than beta, you say yes. When x less than beta, you say no. So when x greater than beta, you say yes. But yes could be two conditions. One is there's actual signal here. You say yes, this will be called K, the right right property. But there are situations where there's actually only noise. But if you somehow you say yes here, and what you got is put a full sum up. That's two. Then the other direction, when x less than beta, when you say no, there's no signal here. But if actually there were signal, it's meets uh, when there's no signal, the correct rejection. So there are four probabilities. This is the key. You understand it, you should understand the four probabilities. There are basically two situations. There's noise alone, noise plus signal. Then you make a decision, yes or no. Right? So two by two. So there are four choices. So these two are correct. These two are wrong. This crack confirmation, crack rejection, false alarm, and miss. Okay. Here comes the interesting why mathematics is important now. Why now we say psychometric like function of is not enough. Now bring back to, 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 to the reader thing. Okay. Why we cannot see just simply make this beta anyway. So let's just continue move on. Why we have these four chances? Okay. That's because of the funny. Uh, no, let me, let me finish this math here. So the probability of a hit okay, should be, this is the probability. Now I'll take this further. This is a two density function. So if we're going to derive this further mathematically, this probability, that is given there is a signal, and you decide there is a signal, that probability, the probability of heat is, is area underneath this distribution curve from here above. So that's area. But it, when there's no signal, you still decide there's a signal. Then when you, there's no signal, what underlying <coughs> situation is this one? And 
you see it here, then this probability is this here. <coughs> so you see, this, this life will be much simpler this, if there's two distribution, no overlap. You draw a line in between, one way or another. Then you, have, you would have this two probability, you have no force arm, no beats. But almost nothing exists like this is life. In the, in the next slide, I'll show you this a good picture. So, so now you see the trick point here is now is where do we place the beta? Okay. Well, if I place the beta, since you see, if I want to optimize the heat probability, the heat, I want to optimize the area underneath this curve. I want to place the beta, move beta as left as possible, right? If you move beta all the way to infinity, this will become a one. But at the same time, as the left you move, the larger this area, so it will increase the force on. See, you see, you can't get a boost. You increase the hit rate, you increase the force on. And some say, what the hell is the force on? So what? So in radar process, this is the big deal. That means you're sitting at a radar operator. You send the pulses out, pulses come back. You have to decide yes or no. Okay. Now, if you're just airline traffic controller in Dallas Airport, BWI, well, you're a Southwest airline fly, you know, I miss, I miss it. But if you, you are in military control the decision for ballistic missile, is there a missile for other control or not? Well, that's kind of, if you miss it, if you miss it, you could destroy it. But equal value is that it falls off. There's no missile, there's just birds in the sky. You say, there's a missile. You might watch movies like this, right? You say, fire missile. Well, the consequences is there. So the goal, of course, and now it says this, for read, it's all come from radar signal. Is to maximize your hit probability, but minimize force around. This is two and push pull. This is the mathematical mechanism allow you to analyze how you do this. This is essentially what we do every day because the task they give it to you on Monday has no consequences. Okay. Suppose we put you in a room and do this task. I tell you, every time you get it right, I increase your grade in this classroom by 0.1 point. Every time you get it wrong, I punish it by minus 0.2. Once you put this condition, now you every, every time you make a decision, now now you, you have consequences. Okay. That's exactly what we do every day in life. We do this, animal do this, radar do this. Same thing, same garden by mathematics. So the key here is where to place this. Okay, let me give you one example. And, and many of you I know will eventually be in medical school. And this is what doctor will have to face literally every day if you are with the audience. Uh, you, you may or may not be aware of this. For example, this is a heavy example of detecting whether there's tumor from patient's radiograph. So if someone goes to the hospital and the doctor suspected he or she may have tumor in, in the lung, there takes x-ray. Okay, uh, I assume all of you have seen some sort of x-ray. They look at x-ray, kind of black or white. There's a little bit dark spot here, maybe dark, maybe too dark. Okay. So you can decide what that is. That's exactly the task that we did on Monday. Right? The background right now is not white, it's that green, dark, lung that you saw. Okay, so if the distribution of a normal lung is this, and the distribution of a suspect error is this, then basically you are making a decision whether that appears seemingly darker. Is that really darker than background? That's, that's the issue. Okay? Now you can say, okay, I'm going to draw a line here. When this is this darker, I call it yes. Now for patient, what does that mean? If the doctor decided, yeah, you, could, you might got the cancer or something tumor in the lung. Well, next is biopsy. Biopsy is not a it's not a pleasant thing. Have a stick needle in your lung, or cut open, take a piece of tissue, put it on a microscope, and see if it's a cancer. That has a lot of consequences. Now of course if you miss it, if somebody has cancer, you don't know this, three months from now will be twice a day. So, so that is in the has to make. Okay. So if you draw a line here, this head is in this. This is force alarm, this is correction. Okay. I'd like you to understand that as well how to calculate those four probabilities based on curve like this. And then now come down to the question is there a tumor or not? Okay. So if you are a doctor who is very, very, con uh, very conservative, that if anything I suspect is, is a cancer, I'm going to call it cancer. All patients send it to pathologists to get a biopsy, right? So you will put that solution really low. Anything you say as a side possible darkness, a 
above ground, I'm going to call it possibility of ground. Then you put here. Yeah, your heat rates might be very high. That in this case, 97.5. But the fourth one is very high. 84% of the patient will be sent to do unnecessary biopsy. Now, if you are on the side, you say, well, you know, I'm pretty optimistic. I want to call it if it's really very dark. You hit half a percent. Your fourth one is very low, but you only hit 50% of the patient. You miss out 50%. That is a when, for those of you who have ever become doctor eventually, if you become a radiologist, remember this book. Every time you look at this, your brain is doing this mathematics. Okay. But this is now, of course, it's not brain now. From here forward, actually I had a conversation with college students. Here's from now, it's not really us, it's sitting there. It's an AI system sitting there reading. But even you have an artificial intelligence system reading a radiograph, you do exactly the same thing. It does not change this problem. That you have to still have to decide where to draw that line. Okay. So this where you put this line is this called observing decision criteria. You make decisions. Either you make it or AI system will make it. Okay. Now, of course, there's a parameter here that's crucial. That's how close is two two distribution are. The further apart, the better. Suppose you have a rigid graph that that Give your lung has distribution like this normally. And you, you inject patients in current some kind of contrast agency that will highlight the tumor that this thing exists. Then when tumor shows up, it will be really dark. So that is should be here. Without contrast agency, the tumor is here. Now obviously you can see the further this is apart, the easier decision, the higher chance of hitting right a lower chance of the first one. Okay. So therefore, if you are an engineer, make a machine now, you know what to make. Increase this distance. The larger distance increase, better. So this distance, we say here, the D, we call it capital D, or if normalized by sigma variance, that is D prime. That is called D prime. D prime is distance between this. If it is one standard deviation way, we we'll call D prime is one. So now this is really, really most important um, uh, curve of this slide. This is a curve that we call receiver operating characteristics, ROC. Uh, this is exact engineer. This is not made by neuroscientists or physicians or psychologists. This was made by radar engineers. The radar engineers want to analyze the radar detector, how well it operates, what are time they say to maximize the heat and minimize it. Uh, first alarm, they come up with this curve. This curve, ROC curve, has fourth arm as x-axis, hit rate of y-axis. Okay. And uh, now, um, the way this operator is found, uh, there's particularly d prime. And so, so d prime equals zero means it's two distribution on top of each other. So this way, no matter how you draw that line, the hit probability, the fourth arm is equal. Us here. Okay, you can't do any decision. Don't say, oh, there's no decision to make. If D prime equals one, is this curve. And when D prime becomes larger and larger, the curve goes this way. Now, this is more, so to us, this direction is more desirable because now you can get a smaller force amount and a large curve. So, this is the curve now. I to summarize this. Uh, in, in many classes, in, in, in other places, what think about a week to talk about? Assume you guys are work hard on the side, so I'm going to flash this through, but be sure to digest this. Okay. This is how it works. So how do we relate this curve to this? Okay. Uh, so here we go. So if we set the beta somewhere here, just like somewhere, like, then you can calculate the force arm, calculate the heat from the other one curve here. Now, if I set the curve here, the, the beta one here. So if I keep moving this left, what happened to, towards the left? What happened to hit rate? Does hit rate increase or decrease? Increase. First arm, increase. But if we move this towards the right, so hit rate drop, first arm drop. But that's how this moves. So suppose if you understand this, give you this question on the exam, say here's one point, here's another point, which one is true? Which one is true? It's beta one greater than beta 2 or less than beta 2? Which one? Which one? Beta 1 is greater than beta 2. Yeah. That's right. So in this case, 
kids, there are two beta by this is 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 twelve. Which one is higher? Which one is higher? Beta one, beta two. Yeah, it's beta one because uh, if you move beta towards this direction, both kids and probably will drop. That's will move this. So if you move this direction, this curve will move this direction. Will drop. <coughs> so so. so it's okay, you, you make a bit, but, but spend some time to think about this. Now, our Rosy curve is actually summarizes summarize all of this. If you understand this, you go back to everything. Now, if you have a, your parents or grandparents are engineers, electrical engineer, if you go back home, Christmas, you told them, you know, daddy or grandpa, I actually learned our Rosy curve. They'll be so impressed. All the classical engineers, if you told them, that you know ROC curve. This is jargon, but many engineers. This is how we analyze, analyze a, a reserve like this. Okay. Doesn't work. We have beta one, beta two. That give you quality pretty worth points. Okay. And the reason the curve changes is because the distance. Okay. So the, now, now finally, I finishes with, with another real life example. And uh, <coughs> what does this mean? A real physician making decision. And they, they're, they're, this is a medical malpractice example. There's a study of a doctor's performance uh, in Boston were analyzed. Uh, 10,000 cases were analyzed by a special commission. The commission decided uh, which were handled with neg negligently and which it will. They found 100 were handled very badly. And there's good cause for malpractice suit. Of the 100, only 20 cases were pursued. So there are 10,000 cases. I don't know, they sort of finishing into do their job, maybe missing. Okay. But what should we conclude from this? This is based on some answer. Well, um, uh, Ralph Nader, uh, I don't know if anyone even know politics, he was quite annoying. Let me stop there. Not as annoying as Carmen, but it's quite annoying. Uh, they actually changed the name now, because you know, you know, I used these slides for 10 years. I realized that you guys are. You're also too young to know this. I need to change this for, for some contemporary characters. And others conclude that doctors are not being sold enough. But this conclusion was based on only on partial information, case and basis. What I did not tell you is what happened in other 9,900 9, cases. How many lawsuits were there in <coughs> case? What if there are many false ones? So this is a classic. This is a real case I've got it from this paper. That you know, you you, you doctors here in hospital, best place. You can go to Emily Anderson, the cancer hospital. No matter where you go, give them ten thousand patients that has special times. The screen, they're gonna be stuck. If you say, if you miss it, you're negligent. Well, you didn't ask other questions. The, what could be force on? Force on is terrible. Not only for outside. If you go to hospital, you had no cancer. Doctor say, you know. You, you, Serves might have cancer. It has tremendous psychological consequences on the patient at the time. So it's more than just about oxygen. So doctor makes this decision very carefully, one way or another. And if now I hope you appreciate what they you become done. That's not an easy decision. It's not a clean cut. This is a, there is a, it's not a human thing. It's, it, there's mathematics behind it because it's not like one. And this apply not only to really graph, a whole range of now, but after I tell you all of this, so what I'm telling you until now is that in the, in, in the form of detection sensory discrimination, there's a nice mathematics for the detection theory. But I also should tell you perception is brain interpretation of the sensory environment. It's very important for you to understand that. What our brain say here is not exactly controlled by mathematics. Here is an issue. And mathematics, no matter how beautiful it is, it does not always obey the brain. The brain does, always, does not always obey until you